After my clapping, you will hear the normal echo. Now please join me to the front of the steps. And when the sound of the clapping touches the steps according to the speed of the sound, that frequency, it will travel in the chamber. Yeah. But when it comes out, it will be equal to the song of a bird. And we still don't know how to do that or how they did that and we say we have <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's shocking. And the sound of the temple and the bird it's already in computers and sonograms to check the frequencies and the two of them they're equal. This is the ancient basketball. I seen this one in the movie Apocalypto. Yes. <laughs> it was really close to reality. The captain of the winning team. Would it get sacrificed? Yeah, because it was an honor. Holy <laughs> watch, there were seven players per team. And if they did this game for religion, it was the winning card and the one who had sacrificed. If the game was done for politics, that's not name sacrificed. It's name execution. So as a winner, you kill the loser because the head gets a trophy. Through those reason who's up there with no hands and a palm ball. The spectators they used to be on top. Up that front, it's where the priest used to rule the game. Up this tribune was the visitors. And up this front, the royal families. Up top here, yeah? If you go a little bit far, you can see a player kneeling down with no head. From the neck, there's seven lines of blood that are turned into snakes, and the middle one goes and turns into one of the branches of the tree of life that I was showing you at the beginning. Yeah. So this is all hand carved at the... Yeah. And after my clapping, you will hear the echo seven times. Okay. Did you count it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Being the priest up there, he was able to speak naturally like you and me, but that distance. So whatever you were saying, people there, they could hear it. So this is the priest tower, yeah? Yes, now please get closer. It's decorated with the tree of life. The pillars have coverings associated to the myth of creation. And up there, you can still see some of the original color red with those carvings showing us a moment of a ritual, like an initiation ritual. Because of the fragment of the roof that is still there, when the sound touches the wall, the sound is projected a second later to the other end. Hear it. <laughs> this is the site where the spectators used to climb to see from up there the game and you can still see some of, some the, of steps. the steps but the rest is gone because when the Spaniards came they took a lot of them to build their houses, churches, haciendas son of a gun that's part of the conquering process yeah well what is interesting in this site is that they never touch the snake because you know what is the snake meaning in the Bible or in Christianity, right? Yeah, it's the so devil. when the Spaniards came, they were afraid to touch them because it might be doors. The they were not their doors exactly, so they were afraid of that. The headdress, protection elbows, hips and knees, and here it's holding the head and look at the stick. I said they might need a stick. Yeah. To score. To score, yeah. Like the stick of lacrosse, you see? Because the ball's so heavy, yeah. That's crazy that it was all painted at one time, because, like, when oh, you wow. see it, you never, you can never imagine it being all, like, blue and red. It was really, really that beautiful. The chambers inside, one and two. In the first one, there is a lying down statue, stone made, like a woman giving birth. But in the second one, there is a beautiful jaguar decorated yeah. with 73 stones of jade. The jade in the eyes is jade from Asia, so in China. Yeah. And we still have to find how. Are you familiar with the Aborigines in Australia? Yeah, the didgeridoo. That's good. They found one inside here. No So way. considering these things, when did that idea came? Who bring that to here? What kind of navigation system is what archaeologists they need to study? To know so how they have happened. no idea no, how. Not yet. Where the sacrifice was done. And 
watch the skulls. They're about 2,000. Everyone is different. Every skull is different? Archaeologists, that, they still have to find skeletons, bones, ashes to prove. But you know, there's not a paper, book, or something that tells us how many people they sacrifice or how many people they execute. Yeah. Archaeologists, they have found no more than 200. So seems like the Mayans, they did some sacrifices or some executions, but they did that for controlling people. But you know, if you're here on the Equinox Day, let's say March or September 21st, if you're here with some rice, you will see the sun to rise exactly in the east. But at noon, the sun will be precisely on top. And at noon, the four sides of the building, we have light, no shadow. That's what makes the building and teaching it so unique because if we try to build this in another place in the world, for sure with the technology instruments we can get the architecture, decoration, but if it's not in the same location, position, longitude, you know, what happens here it will never work. It'll, ne it'll always have shade on one exactly. side. Exactly, the building is capturing the four seasons of the year, so if we try to build this in another place in the world, it will never happen. Or maybe we will get one or two seasons, but not the four. So it's precisely lined up to the sun, used by the Mayans at that time as a sun dive, as a temple, and a calendar. Do they know how old it is? It is only 1300 years. Now, if you're here on April the 6th watching when sun rises, so it's exactly in the belly of that figure for eight to nine minutes, only on April 6th. That's when the Mayans, they were getting ready for crops, planting. So that was the sign for them to know when to do that. This, there's gold jewelry oh. in the ground oh, in the jungles here, yeah? Oh yeah, there's lots. Because, so this whole thing was just trees here. Mayans, they were here, this was all completely open. But then when and they... When they abandoned everything... Grew everything, forest? Everything. And then... The level to work was up on, up <coughs> on top of these platforms. So when archaeologists in the 20s, that was Mexico and Carnegie Institute, they started to work in restoration. That's when everything started to yeah. say, reappear. So when the Spanish came, they actually took a bunch of stones. Like over here, you'll see a bunch of stones missing because they went to actually build their churches with the stones. And when the archaeologists came, they replaced all these ones back. That's what it looked like before the restoration and after. Thanks again, Rafael. We did it. We did it. This is our tour guide. He's Rafael. He was born and raised over here along, amongst the Mayan ruins. So it was a, part of the ruins. Yeah, part of the, it was a pleasure to do the tour with you, man. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else.